Hey, what's up guys? This is episode 36 of a series where we examine the cut content, design, and development of Fallout New Vegas. Today, we're taking another in-depth look at the game's cut content. Let's get started. East of Molrat Ranch, you'll find a group of mad Brahmin. But there's actually an entire cut settlement here called Underpass. While the structures still appear, nearly everything else planned for the area was disabled. There are several unused generic NPCs who were meant to populate the town. They have AI packages to walk around the area and sleep. The nearby locked house is owned by the Underpass faction, and it's filled with maze and alcohol stills. The player would have been trespassing if they entered this area, but beyond that, it's difficult to speculate what was going on here. Well, howdy. There's also a character named Meg Reynolds. She was meant to be Underpass's mayor, and has a greeting along with a few unused player lines. Most notably, you seem distressed, is something going on? This line is seemingly a reference to a cut quest, where the player repaired a broken water purifier. The quest script reads, This purifier would provide clean water to underpass if it were functional. Whoever assembled it had no idea what they were doing. Many parts are connected incorrectly or hooked up backwards. Someone with the proper knowledge could easily get the purifier operational. The player could then fix the water purifier, presumably for a small reward. During the quest Beyond the Beef, the player can capture Carlisle St. Clair for the White Glove Society to cannibalize. Carlisle St. Clair's house was a part of this cut town as its cell name is Underpass St. Clair, making him the only survivor of the town. The player can note that he doesn't fit in around here, even though his house is literally in the middle of fucking nowhere. There's really not much going on in this area of the map, so it's disappointing it was cut. If you're looking to restore this location, check out El Pascal's The Living Desert. This mod restores Underpass and makes a plethora of excellent changes that makes the Mojave more immersive. There is a link to it below in the comments. During the quest, The Legend of the Star, the courier collects 50 Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle caps from across the wasteland. Then you travel to the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters, and this area has a notable amount that was cut. There's an NPC named Felicia. The only traces of her are in the SSHQ quest script and her unused vendor chest. Like the other NPCs in the quest, she was likely searching for the star caps too. There's a rumor that she would have traded the player rare items for star bottle caps, but there's nothing remaining to support that theory. There's a unique iBot with recorded dialogue that was meant to appear here as well. Welcome to the headquarters of the Sunset Sarsaparilla Company. You appear to require assistance. I'll go find someone. I suspect the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters was meant to have an additional floor or basement level, as the interior is named SSHQ01, implying there was going to be at least one more cell named 02. It's also possible that these cells were merged together. After completing this quest, the player receives Pew Pew. This unique variant of the laser pistol deals additional damage at the cost of 5 energy cells per shot. However, there's an unused script that reveals it was once planned to function in an entirely different way. A note in the script explains how it worked and why it was cut. This script is attached to weapon, Weapon NV Laser Pistol Unique, otherwise known as Pew Pew. It makes the pistol fire twice quickly for every pull of the trigger. If the player has one charge left in the pistol and fires, the pistol will fire twice and pull the ammo for the second shot from the player's reserve before playing the reload animation. As soon as we have a way to check ammo, I'll set this up to not fire the second shot 
if there's no ammo left in the gun, they either couldn't fix this issue, or it simply wasn't worth the time it would have taken. Notably, it originally cost a brutal 15 energy cells per shot and had a magazine of 30 rounds. This was later changed in a patch to be more forgiving. The big gun skill appeared in Fault 1, 2, and 3, and was at one time planned to return in New Vegas. It was at least partially implemented, as there are still several references to it in the game files. The texture files reveal that the True Police Stories magazine originally affected the small gun skill, while the Millsurp Review magazine was intended for big guns. Josh Sawyer commented on why this was cut, stating, It was that, as well as the concept of big guns being inherently not weak. If big guns were to be a worthwhile investment for the player, it should have weapons to use from the early game to the end. That sort of necessitates creating enough low-end big guns for it to feel viable. We designed some weapons like that for Van Buren, Riveters for example, but it felt odd and forced an entire class of weapons in throughout the game. That is what we did with unarmed weapons in FNV, though arguably unarmed and melee should have been combined or made more distinctive from each other. It felt more sensible in FNV to eliminate the skill, retain the weapons themselves, and use strength as a factor for their use. That way, a minigun could still feel like it was a powerful weapon when you found it, as opposed to needing to make weak miniguns or new weapons entirely that scale up or are replaced by other big guns later. Finally, there are five unused achievements. First up, Boomer's Pride. The player would have completed this by inflicting 10,000 damage with big guns. This was clearly cut alongside the big gun skill. Mod Master involved attaching every single weapon mod in the game. Perhaps this was seen as too difficult for the player to track, as it was eventually replaced with Mod Machine, which simply required attaching a total of 20 weapon mods. Probably the most interesting cut achievement is General Custer. To complete this one, you had to recruit each companion and then have all of them die during a hardcore playthrough. There are also two unused caravan achievements, Sore Loser and Card Shark. Sore Loser required the player to kill five characters they had lost caravan games to, while Card Shark required the player to kill five NPCs they had beat in caravan. In 10 years of playing New Vegas, I don't think I've won five games of caravan, so I'm good with the last one being cut. Speaking of which, there are a handful of cut caravan decks. Melissa Lewis and Klamath Bob were both meant to play. Most notably, Poindexter, one of the misfits at Camp Golf, has several unused dialogue lines about playing. A fascinating proposition. Naturally, my considerable genius makes me a master of the game, so try not to be disappointed if you lose miserably. All right, let's see what you got. I'm gonna roll over you. Well now, this is an unexpected variable. You really must let me challenge you to a rematch so I can analyze what passes for your strategy. I am unsurprised regarding your appalling lack of talent. Perhaps you'd care to try another hand? After all, you can only improve. Very well. I would wish you luck, but of course, peerless intellect is all that matters here. As you wish. Once you've salved your battered ego, perhaps you'll make another go of it. These additions would have made New Vegas into an even better game. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.